as Ric Flair would say, woo! <laughs> yeah, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of having a non-conference game during the conference season. Okay, we are in late January, but of course we knew ahead of time that there was going to be a Big 12 SEC challenge in which um, all 10 of the Big 12 schools, along with 10 of the SEC schools, would go head-to-head -head the last Saturday of uh, this month. And, of course, Oklahoma drew LSU playing on the road. And, yeah, LSU may not be ranked, um, but it is still a good team. And Baton Rouge was packed, and it was a very um, uncomfortable environment for the Sooners. At least it looked that way for most of the game. Sooners found themselves down eight at halftime, down by as many as 14 in the second half. Quite a chore for the number one team in the country to handle, but the Sooners – as they've done for the most part this season, have been able to handle the big stage. And that was no exception today. What a comeback. You know, what a comeback. You know, I know that Ben Simmons is going to be the number one pick in the draft. Okay. Athletically, he is one heck of a specimen. And he's going to make a team out there very happy uh, come lottery time. Buddy Heald is the player of the year. And if you needed any more proof of that, you got it today. Hill got off to a bad shooting start. In fact, the Sooners as a team got off to a bad shooting start. I mean, Jordan Woodard had a game to forget. It looked like the second Iowa State game all over again. But thanks to Buddy Hill, thanks to a spectacular game by Ryan Spangler, you know, he had a double-double, he had a couple of threes, had 16 in the game, 10 rebounds. He was terrific. And thanks to Isaiah Cousins with 18 points, you know, seven assists, including uh, the game-winning shot with just under five seconds to go. The Sooners refused to lose and beat a very tough and determined squad from Baton Rouge. OU 77, Louisiana State 75. The Sooners moved to 18 and 2. Um, they should keep that number one ranking as far as the AP poll intact. And as far as the coaches, which the Sooners are number two, um, they're going to be making the push for number one in that poll as well come Monday. Uh, so why did the Sooners struggle in this game? You got to give LSU a lot of credit. LSU you know, shot very well to begin the game. They got to the free throw line quite often early on, and that led to a lot of point production. And LSU led this game by eight at halftime. It's by the fact that they're all everything player guy that you know I've bragged about before this video, Ben Simmons, um, only shot the ball twice. He made both shots and had four points. But offensively, he really wasn't a part of the production. He had some assists, and he played just about the whole game, but he was not a scoring factor. I mean, you had guys like Tim Quarterman. You know, shooting beyond the arc, 18 points. He was a factor. You know, Craig Victor had 15 points for the Tigers. He was a factor, too. Simmons really did not make his impact felt, at least on the stat sheet, until early in the second half when he had that amazing dunk, and I believe that propelled LSU's lead to double digits. And as I mentioned earlier, the Sears found themselves down 14 points in the second half, playing on the road and knowing that they were in serious trouble. But the Sears forcing turnovers. The Sears finally were shooting the ball better, getting to the free throw line a little bit more often, and Buddy Heald caught absolute fire from three-point range. Eight threes for a guy that I believe will be the National Player of the Year, barring injury or barring just something unforeseen. 32 in the game, eight threes. Um, he was amazing. But the play that I'll remember the most is going to be that final play. Isaiah Cousins got the winning bucket, sure, but a design call by Lon Kruger in which Cousins had the dribble and Heald was used as a decoy to clear the way, to clear the path from the top of the key for Isaiah Cousins because you knew that LSU, and, and rightfully so, was going to focus on Heald in the final seconds. So Heald basically took himself out of the play, made a clear path for Cousins, and, and give credit to Kadeem Latin. Yeah, it wasn't a big point day for him, but, you know, he had a couple of blocks in the game, including at the very end when LSU was trying to, to tie it as time was running out. The Sooners made the plays at the end. They had to survive, but they did it, and the Sooners, 77, LSU 75, two-point win for the Sooners to go to 18-2, and now they'll go back to Big 12 play early next week. They should be able to handle TCU at home early next week, which will be, of course, the beginning of February. Congrats to Oklahoma. This is one of those games, again, a game like this will make you better because once, you know, you get into March Madness, you're going to be tested, okay? And in the case of the Sooners, who rely so much on the jump shot, you may not have a game where things are going your way. You're going to be tested. 
When you win a game like this in an environment like that against an LSU team that's not ranked but still good, it makes you better because you faced a hard environment, you faced adversity with a double-digit deficit, and you still found a way to win the game. So for the Sooners, a great comeback win for them, and they showed in the end why they are one of the top teams in the country, and in this case, in the AP poll, the top team in the country. LSU was tough, but the Sooners refused to lose and got a big road win, and the momentum should continue entering the latter part of this season. Boomer Sooner.